Should I share my screen? Yeah. Okay, well, hello to uh, all of the NACO members from across the uh, country. We're grateful that you have joined us for today's NACO webinar. Uh, today, we're talking about the budget process and specifically how to modernize uh, the budget process and what are some of the opportunities, tools, and resources uh, that you can uh, deploy to uh, help you in your budgeting process. My name is Kyle Klein. I serve as National Director of Strategic Partnerships for the National uh, for the NACO Financial Services Corporation. And I'm thrilled to be here today with you all to announce our newest partnership at NACO with ClearGov. Um, you may ask, okay, well, what does exactly, what is a partnership and, and an endorsed uh, uh, program mean? Um, to understand that and explain that, you have to go to NACO's mission, which, uh, as you probably are familiar with this, it's to strengthen America's counties. So that's why NACO exists, to strengthen your counties, to work with you and partner with you to um, help you as you serve those in your communities. Uh, the, the Financial Services Corporation, the department of, of NACO that I work for, supports that mission by identifying and developing sustainable, cost-saving, uh, value-added programs and tools and resources that can that can help uh, NACO and our counties achieve that uh, mission of, of being strengthened. Um, so our team goes through and we evaluate uh, partners, uh, we evaluate programs and resources that we think would be beneficial. Uh, they have to uh, adhere to strict standards and, and, you know, just quite frankly, show a lot of value to our counties. Uh, ClearGov is that partner. Um, they pass the test with flying colors, uh, as I like to tell uh, people that I interact with, and we're just proud to have them as part of uh, an endorsed partner with NACO. Uh, today's webinar is being recorded. We just want to let you know that it will be available after um, today's call. It'll be on the NACO website, and we'll also send that out to you via email in case you want to go back to that and review the content or share that with your colleagues at the county. Um, also, we want today's uh, session to be interactive, so uh, we encourage you to uh, submit your questions via the chat function found at the bottom of your screen. I will be uh, reviewing those and monitoring the chat, so we will make sure we get to as many questions as we possibly can. Um, so with that, I would just like to introduce um, our speakers for today's session. Um, and again, thank you everyone for joining um, wherever you're calling in from. Uh, so today we are joined by Chris Bullock. He is the CEO and the co-founder of ClearGov. So thank you, Chris, for, for being here and thank you for your great partnership with NACO. Uh, we're also joined by Amy Dent, who is the auditor of Christian County, Missouri and Lucia Gomez, who is the budget manager at Yuma County, Arizona. So thank you uh, to both of you for being on today's call and um, thank you for your great service to your counties. So with that, I will now turn it over to Chris. Chris. Thanks, Kyle. Pleasure is ours. So thank you everyone for joining. Again, my name is Chris Bullock, CEO and co-founder of ClearGov. Uh, today, just gonna be going through a few short slides to, to set the stage, introduce ClearGov, tell you a little bit about our budget cycle management suite. Uh, then we'll go through a, a very quick demo, probably about 15 minutes. Just wanna give you a flavor for each one of our different solutions and how they can help streamline your budget process. And then we'll spend uh, the, the second half of uh, today's webinar uh, interviewing uh, Lucia and Amy about their experiences with the platform. So with that, let's talk about how ClearGov can help you budget better. First off, a little bit about who we are. Uh, the company was founded in 2015. Uh, we've got about 75 uh, full-time employees headquartered in Boston, but we have offices all over the country as well as in uh, Eastern Europe. And uh, we were most recently really honored to receive the Inc. 5000 award uh, for the 651st fastest growing company in America. And we also have earned the GovTech 100 for the last six consecutive years. And you know, we now serve over 500 uh, local governments across 45 states. And you can see some of the counties that we're lucky enough to, to work with right here. So I want to talk a little bit, you know, how, how did ClearGov grow so quickly and become such a trusted solution? Well, you know, we've met with, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of local governments, and it became clear to us over time that traditional legacy budget cycles are really just inefficient 
Uh, they're often very scattered where you have uh, documents and notes across email and different files on different desktops and in the cloud, uh, very disjointed and, and obviously very tedious. Uh, these budget processes can take hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of hours. And we found that they typically start with the capital budget where the process may look something like this. You may have a, a Excel form uh, that you send out for uh, department heads and division leaders to request uh, capital improvements or capital equipment. So all of that is done through Excel, which is then submitted via email, and then generally brought together in a large master Excel spreadsheet. And then personnel budgeting comes into focus and yet another probably even bigger spreadsheet that may have dozens and maybe even hundreds of tabs where um, it's actually really even more complicated when you have uh, bargaining units that uh, you may be uh, in contract negotiations with and you're trying to kind of forecast out not only next year's personnel budget, but you know for the next five or 10 years. And that can get very, very complicated in a personnel uh, budgeting in, in Excel spreadsheet. And then you have your operating budget, really designed to kind of pull obviously all these things together. Again, we often found that this was done in Excel and you may be sending out uh, you know, a copy of that Excel spreadsheet to, to dozen, dozens of different uh, department heads and division leaders who are all making their changes and you have to kind of pull all that stuff back together. So there's a lot of connections between these different budgets and a lot of opportunities for things to break. You know, after you've gone through this long, arduous process, uh, you really want to tie that together in a budget book, which is also, we think, very outdated as it's typically done through a Word document that not only takes hundreds, if not thousands of hours to build, uh, it's really difficult to keep up to date. You know, we heard people say, you know, our budget book is out of date as soon as we get it printed. And we thought, you know, there's gotta be a better way uh, that, you know, not only has a output in a PDF, but, you know, maybe a, a better way to keep something constantly updated. So we'll talk about that today. Um, so bottom line, we felt that modernization is a must. And as we looked at the market, we felt that there are a number of solutions out there that just didn't seem to fit right for local governments. Um, you know, these solutions were very time consuming to implement and maintain. Oftentimes, they were an overbuilt feature set that's really difficult to use. And, and maybe that often stems from uh, software that is built for the, the business segment, but being adapted for the public sector. And often these solutions uh, were very expensive up front and really got you with those ongoing professional service fees. And so when we thought about what would be a, the perfect fit for local governments and counties, we felt it needed to be something that was quick and easy to get started and maintain, uh, you know, maybe even utilizing templates to help get you off and running very, very quickly. Also collaboration, super important, especially in today's uh, COVID environment, hopefully soon to be post COVID environment where you really need to connect with people in the cloud and collaborate. Uh, you also want it to be something that complements your existing financial systems. We know that the ERP systems that you're utilizing, you know, have deep, deep roots, and oftentimes you cannot change that. You still need to modernize your system, so it needs to be something that works together with that. And then also, you know, just make this affordable and have it a, a flat fee with unlimited support and not with all those gotcha fees. So. You know, our, our mission has been to create this, this easy to use software platform that simply helps governments budget better. And really, we believe that every community desires and, and frankly deserves a government that's empowered by a modern software to help them work more effectively and efficiently. So that's really what we've built. We, we like to call it just right software that we've built specifically for local governments. Um, you know, we'll talk about with Amy and Lucia today, and hopefully they'll they'll back me up here that we, we built a platform that's super easy to implement, you know, works with any ERP platform, really, really easy to use, you know, uh, something that's uh, easy to use, intuitive uh, for all stakeholders, um, both for internal stakeholders, but also for citizens uh, who utilize our communications platforms, and then easy to connect as well as easy to afford. And so, if you look at our project, our product suite, uh, we refer to it as budget cycle management, and it's it's comprised of five different products. And we talked about kind of that that traditional budget cycle. So our product line actually mirrors that, and it starts with capital budgeting that will help you automate the way you collect and organize your capital for, or capital requests, 
moves on to uh, personnel budgeting, which will help you know, kind of rebuild your uh, your Excel models in a web-based environment and allow you to run different scenarios and, and test different what-if uh, scenarios. Then it moves into operational budgeting, which really brings all of this together into that, that one operating budget uh, where you can invite department heads to, to collaborate uh, on the individual line item level and submit requests that can be uh, approved, edited, or denied, and, and all maintained in an audit trail. Um, and then we move on to our really kind of our communication side of things. So if you look at these three products being our kind of back office workflow uh, improvement and streamline, these two products are now that you've built that budget, how do you communicate that in a modern and effective way? We have two products there. One is the digital budget book, which really transforms the traditional printed budget book into an interactive online experience that also has the ability to download and print to a PDF. And then we have our transparency platform, which is really a, a modern take on a, a civic engagement and helps you tell your financial story in a way that's really easy for, uh, for your residents to understand. And uh, as I mentioned, it's really important for me to, to say this, this is not uh, an alternative to your existing ERP or accounting system. This is something that sits on top of your ERP system and works directly with it. Uh, you would uh, export your data into a, uh, a simple format, send that over to us via email, and we'll onboard everything for you. Uh, and you log in and you'll see all your data in the platform and, and you're off and running. So it's really important to have a very quick uh, and easy uh, to implement platform that we've built here. So what I'm gonna do now is run through a product demonstration. Uh, we've got five products here to show. Um, so I can't, I don't wanna spend too much time on each. Um, but I did want to give you a flavor for the platform and, and um, hopefully me walking through this will give you a good sense for, for how everything works. So we're going to cleargov.com right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is sign in to a fictitious account. I'm signing in here. And we're gonna land into our, our home dashboard here, which just gives you some quick views of different budgets that you've been working on recently, what products you have and access to our support center. Over here on the left-hand side, you'll see all the different products that we uh, just walked you through. So I'm gonna start with capital budgeting and you can see that we've got a capital improvement plan here that I've been working on. And right away, you're gonna land in a, a dashboard. And this dashboard is based upon different scenarios that you can look at uh, within the application. In this scenario, you can see that I've got 11 requests uh, for about $1.9 million. And then you've got this dashboard that shows the capital costs by department. You can also look at operational costs, cost savings, or by funding source. And so here we're looking at a breakdown of the five years, but you can also look at that on a, a to totality uh, basis across all years. And then it will show you which projects uh, and equipment, for instance, have been included in this plan. This dashboard is really predicated off of our request manager and uh, it starts with our forms. So right here, um, this is kind of our reimagining of those Excel spreadsheets you're probably sending out right now. And the advantage of a web-based environment, instead of having one form that folks are filling out, we've created many different forms here that come out of the box, like a vehicles and wheeled equipment form and computers and related equipment uh, in buildings and facilities. And you can create your own as you want, or you can use ours and just um, you know, uh, customize them from here. But really out of the box, for instance, our buildings and facility form has things like title, project number, department, description or justification they can write here. It even allows you to integrate with your strategic plan so you can add a scorecard to this so the uh, people submitting can show you how well each project aligns with your strategic plan. Um, because this is a buildings uh, um, form, uh, it's asking for an estimated start date and complete date. That's gonna be a little bit different if you looked at the uh, wheeled equipment form, for instance. It allows them to upload images and attachments uh, that are related to this project. Um, you can have a section around what type of project this is. And then you start getting into the, the, the financials behind the project. And this panel right here is our capital planning, our capital cost panel, where again, out of the box, because this is the buildings form we're looking at, it's got these categories of spend. Uh, you can say uh, what the costs were to date and across the next five years, and you can actually do as many years as you like. Um, you can use these categories or even add your own. And then we also have fields for operational costs, 
for funding sources. So real, real easy for the department heads to go through these, fill these out. And once they start submitting them, so you would use, if I scroll back up here, you would use this tab to come in and add requesters and then invite those requesters. Once they start submitting those requests to you, you'll see all of them start to filter into this, uh, this table right here. So you've got all of your, uh, your requests in one single place. You can rank them by department, by um, total cost. You're gonna get a scorecard total that aligns with your, um, that aligns with the strategic plan. And I can drill into each one of these and, and get more detail around these, see those pictures they uploaded, see the breakdown of capital costs by year. So it's a really, really robust platform. And then lastly, you can use some scenario analysis where I can come in and I can build different scenarios. So I've built a best case scenario where everything's included in the budget and it shows you how much uh, request you have by funding source. And then you can come in here at the bottom and select which projects you want to include in a plan or not just by toggling this on or off and it will show you if you're under or over budget. Uh, and then you can even come in here and edit the costs over time. So if you want to shuffle some costs across years, you can do that. So again, really robust uh, capital budgeting product. Um, so next up, I want to give you a, a quick sneak peek at our personnel budgeting platform. Um, again, when you first drop into here, you're going to see uh, a really great dashboard that um, is based off of a scenario that you built in here. Um, so you can see the total personnel budget, the total number of employees and FTEs. It's going to break down your personnel costs um, by type, by unit, and by department. And within this plan, it'll show me how many vacancies we plan on filling, any new positions we're looking to add. So a great bird's eye view. But this is all driven by the data model manager. And we really tried to recreate what you have uh, maybe in a spreadsheet where it's going to be based off of units like a bargaining unit or a non-exempt unit and you can create wage schedules for each one of these units so this is an example of a police hourly wage schedule where you're just going to have a list of all your jobs what department they belong to their standard number of hours their grade and the different steps associated with each one of these jobs once you set up those you're also going to want to set up different additional pay and benefit elements and the system's really really flexible it allows you to set up virtually any type of benefit in here. And I'll give you an example of a, a PPO plan. You can tell it you know, what units this is going to be available for. You can assign this to an object code and then create the different family, employee and child, employee and spouse options, you know, what that premium is, how much the, the county covers, et cetera. And this will all be utilized within the positions tab. So um, what you would do is you'd be able to do a bulk upload from your HRIS system of all your employees and it will instantly start calculating based upon everything that you set up in the data model manager, what their total compensation is here. So I can see on the right hand side what their wages, additional pay and benefits are. Um, and if I scroll down here, you can see uh, I can split up, for instance, wages. I can split that into two different allocations across different accounts. I can set up all of their additional pay elements and benefits. Um, and so it gives you that real quick and easy access uh, view to see how your budget's being driven, as well as being the ability to create vacancies. So you can create vacancies in here. And really vacancies are gonna be used in the scenario planning. The last thing I'll mention before hitting the scenarios tab is the request manager. So just like the capital budgeting platform, uh, you can use this platform to streamline your new position requests. Uh, so um, you would create a form in here, invite your department heads, and they would then fill out those forms and submit those new position requests such that you're able to go into the scenarios page and you can create as many scenarios as you want. Um, but when you create a scenario, the first thing it's going to do is automatically calculate your wages, benefits, and additional pay. Uh, in this instance, we did it for a five-year plan, but you could do a 10, 20 years, as many years as you want. It's automatically going to calculate that. And all of this is driven down here at the bottom. You can see we're in the FY23 tab on wages. Um, but um, and everything's being you know automatically calculated in here. But if I wanted to, I could go into FY24 and say, you know, what if we did a, a 3% permanent adjustment uh, uh, for the police department wages? You know, how would that affect things? And it's going to carry all those forward through future years as well. So you have the ability to do permanent adjustments. You also have the ability to do one-time adjustments and you can do these one-time adjustments 
uh, at the unit level, at the department or division level, and all the way down to the individual level. So you can start to, you know, really kind of manipulate your numbers, both from a permanent or one-time adjustment um, angle. And then same thing with benefits. If you wanted to see, you know, what happens if our benefits increase next year by 7% or 8%, you know, all of these things can be manipulated very quickly. And then likewise, with your new position requests, you can say which ones you want to include or exclude from your plan. And, you know, when would they start? It's going to prorate those start dates to figure out uh, how that would work into your plan. So, Again, very, very quick uh, view of personnel budgeting. Um, hopefully gives you a good sense for how robust that product is. All of this then ties into our operational budgeting platform. So you can pull all this uh, data into here and I'll give you a, a quick view of what that would look like. So this is where you're inviting your department heads and division leaders to edit individual line items, okay? So this is a, a, a dashboard for the general fund. You know, we're looking at total budget expenditures versus revenues and what that projected deficit is or surplus. Down here, this section is going to be driven by the, um, by the table below it. So right now we're looking at expenditures, but if I wanna drill into say public safety, police, I'm gonna go down to operations maintenance, you're gonna see that that's all going to update. And I can see, you know, for a number of years, we've been under budget. There's a couple of years we've been over budget here, uh, but gives you that historical view that you can load into the system. And then I can drill even deeper into here and uh, see the individual account IDs. And so if I wanted to kind of hone in on training and education, I get a much uh, greater detail there. And we see the account ID, the you know last few years of figures here, um, but as I scroll across here, you'll see uh, some uh, stuff that's in progress. And so these are figures that have been submitted by the department heads. In this instance, I've already approved and denied this one. This one was edited. There's a few requests that are pending in here. So to, to uh, address these pending requests, you simply do thumbs up or thumbs down or edit the number. Uh, all of these come uh, with the ability to add uh, subline item details. So if you want to you know, break down training and education by conference, you could do that. Uh, you can even add attachments uh, to all of this, every single one of these line items, and, and even have a conversation around every single line item. So this is a great collaboration platform for all of uh, the, the finance department and to collaborate with all the division and department head leaders. So that's a very quick look at our back office suite. I want to transition now to our communications side of the business, where once you have built this budget, uh, you can publish it to our digital budget book platform. And this is an example of really what I would say is a, a complete paradigm shift in, in budget books, right? Um, what we're doing here is we're taking a website-based uh, first approach uh, where print kind of being secondary, right? I, I think in the old model, you had the, the print was a primary medium that you were focused on. And then, you know, you put it out there on the web as a PDF secondarily. Here, we have a whole new way of kind of reimagining the budget book. And this platform is actually with a single click out of the box, it's going to create all these different sections for you. And it's going to come with templates for all the different fund pages and department pages, which we'll walk you through uh, in a second but it really, really cuts down on the amount of time to, to build these documents. So you can see here's an example of a transmittal letter and um, you know, really easy to, to build out those pages. You can uh, rearrange and add pages as you see fit. Here's a nice example of how they built a strategic plan page within here. So it's not just text, they've dropped images into there. Um, you can also build fund summary pages. So here's an example of a general fund page. And what I mentioned before was a lot of this is template driven. Uh, so it's automatically gonna have a place for you to put your general fund description as well as a summary will automatically be generated. And you just kind of click in the back office solution and start editing this narrative. Then you can actually even uh, invite department heads to edit their narrative. It's automatically creating uh, these graphs, revenue by source, well, which uh, are all interactive, you know, adds a whole new interactivity uh, layer to uh, a, a digital budget book. And then we'll show you that historical view of the data. Again, you know, we're looking at this in a kind of a stacked bar chart, but I can look at it in a mountain chart if I want. I can also look at it as a percentage 
of whole, and all of these are interactive. So if you want to see what this looks like without property tax revenues or uh, shared sales tax, I can you know quickly get a new view of that. Um, so it's it's really quite unique, and as I say, I, I think it's really a, a whole new take on a uh, on a budget book. Uh, so we've got the expenditures by type and by department, and also we have a fund balance section. And I should mention all of these you can view as a spreadsheet breakdown as well. And these spreadsheets are customizable, so you can show as much or as little detail as you want and, and have them turned on or off by default. Also worth mentioning is department budget pages. We'll go in here and look at the county administrator page. And again, this is going to be driven by a template, but you can then go in and, and edit as you see fit. So they've used kind of the header section for mission statement and the major functions. They built a, added a section here for significant accomplishments and initiatives. Uh, they even have a section here for performance reporting. But as we get past that, uh, you'll start to see some of the, the template driven approach and the revenue summary. So all of this, this chart was automatically created uh, revenues by source, all automatically created. So again, uh, I think, you know, as we get in our conversations with Amy and Lucia, we'd love to hear a little bit more about how this has, has saved them time. So um, again, there's a lot, a lot more to this platform. Um, you know, we'd love to have the opportunity to show you how one of these are built. Um, I should also mention, you have the ability to print these. You just enter your email address and you can either select all sections or you can literally page by page select which sections you want in a custom built budget book. So it'll generate a custom built budget book on the fly that will come out looking like this. So this is the PDF that we, I generated just this morning for Yuma County's budget. You can see it has a nice cover page here. It'll dynamically build a table of contents for you. Uh, and so you can see it, it numbers each one of those pages. I can actually click on these. Just wanted to scroll down a little bit before I did that and show you, you know, it's gonna build a, a header section for each page and then you know really nicely lay that out on the page for you complete with the footer um, but again you can use this as a navigational element and go directly to the general fund if you want to go to that page so all of that is is automatically generated uh, lastly uh, I wanted to show and I'm going to log out here um, and go to Christian County's transparency site so um, you know, hey uh, Chris Sorry yeah. to interrupt. We do have a question. Um, are you able to share the link to the Yuma County budget book? Is there a link that um, that you could share? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me do that right now. Middle letter page. Copy that and put that in the chat. All right. It it looks like someone asked if you can build a custom security role for users. Um, so we do have different uh, user roles. We have um, editors, which are going to be able to access everything. And then you've got the requesters who you assign which sections of the budget or which budget pages you want them to have access to. Uh, and then you also have uh, reviewers and some of our applications like the operational budget. You can just give someone a read only view. Uh, and again, you can assign which sections they, they want to have. So. Um, Someone else had asked about an API to bring in actuals from an ERP system. Uh, we do not offer API integrations um, for several reasons. One, we find that most of the ERP platforms just simply don't have APIs um, as they're you know, often on-prem based systems. Uh, and two, we have found that uh, APIs to integrate the data between our systems are, are just a tremendous amount of work and, and they often break. Um, so it's just not only a, work, a lot of work to set up, but a lot of work to maintain. Now, we just found that you know exporting the data from an ERP system into an Excel spreadsheet is, is super super easy, and uh, we built a, a, a pretty slick system to ingest that data fairly quickly. Um, so, um, you know, we, we found that to be the best solution. All right, so I think I addressed most of the questions here. We'll get uh, back into the the transparency platform. So this is ClearGov's modern take on a civic engagement platform. Um, in fact. If you wanted to, you can go to ClearGov and type in any county in the country and we'll have a profile on you already, either through state data or through census data powered. Um, but really uh, what our clients do is they, they claim this page and they upgrade it with much more recent and detailed data. So the homepage gives you a quick demographic snapshot, shows you a financial overview and you can view it by different fund. Um, it shows you a historical view uh, of that fund or all funds in this case. So you can see um, which years you were under budget versus over budget. 
And then it's got some other things like open checkbook, which we'll talk about, and a debt overview. Um, so a nice broad overview. I'm going to click into expenditures and show you that you can break down the expenditures by year, by object, by department, by fund. And it's going to give you a nice broad overview here, which I can you know quickly view as a bar chart or a mountain chart. And these can be customized. And then it will break down your spending, in this instance, department by department. So we are looking at public safety. We like to try to break things down on a, a more digestible form, maybe per capita for the residents. If I click into public safety, it's now going to break down public safety. So we really wanted to make this easy for citizens to peruse through the data. And um, if I get into, say, law enforcement, I'm going to break down one more level here. You'll see that this can get very, very granular. So I can break it down and see the actual account level ID. So if I get into operating expenses, click view more detail, it shows right here. And um, so account by account, if you decide to go this transparent, uh, you have that power and you can actually even link uh, all of your checks. So if you wanted to make this clickable so you can click into the checks, you can do that as well. And then you know, I'll just point out, we've got some automated pages that will you know, produce some nice infographics around your demographics, your population, daytime population by age group, uh, household analysis, kind of the breakdown of family households and married couples. So some really, there's some really nice graphics there. And then, you know, we are also, you know, bringing this platform much beyond a financial transparency platform. Um, we're seeing many, many more uh, communities use things like our, our project features. So this is an example of a, uh, a projects communication portal that was built through this platform that shows all the capital improvement projects on a map um, and I can zoom in on that map, um, or I can just click into any of these, and it will bring me into a, a page that you can very quickly build that will show a breakdown, you know, the, the overview, maybe some pictures that you've uploaded, uploaded on the project. These pages are super customizable, um, but shows your product location, the project budget, um, have a breakdown by by cost type and funding sources. You can put a, you know, uh, show people where it is in the, in the phase of the project and, and provide a timeline for them. And what's neat is people can actually subscribe to this project and uh, enter their email address. So anytime you change these pages, they're gonna get updated. So really, really powerful, a civic engagement platform that, uh, you know, we're rapidly expanding. So I'm gonna stop there. I know I've been speaking extremely quickly, but I've got a lot to get through and I wanna make sure to get through it. Uh, but hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I don't see any other questions here. So let's uh, let's get back here into the presentation. I'm gonna go back to my slideshow uh, and let's get into the, the, the second part of the, the, the today's discussion. And uh, again, I wanna thank Amy and Lucia for joining us today, uh, for being clear of clients and uh, sharing your experiences on the platform. And I have a few questions that we'll, we'll jump through today. Um, but the first one I want to ask, and, and maybe I'll post this to you, Lucia, is you know, what kind of challenges were you facing before working with the ClearGov platform? What really kind of drove you to consider a, a budget cycle management platform? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so we have the two solutions that we have are the digital budget book and our capital budgeting. Um, the main reason for uh, us looking into the digital budget book was uh, we had a lot of spreadsheets that we had to uh, maintain and just uh, being able to keep track of what the latest spreadsheet was, what the latest updates was, it was a struggle. It's a very manual process, uh, prone for errors. Um, and so that's why we, we, we had a lot of duplication of, of data throughout our budget book. Um, so um, lack of consistency in formatting. Um, so we decided to, to see what was out there uh, to uh, help us facilitate our process. Uh, again, it was a very manual process and uh, with ClearGov, it's become uh, as saved as a lot of time uh, putting our budget book together and the presentation of it is, is uh, improved a lot. That's awesome. Yeah, we, we, we heard a lot about that you know, when we were uh, kind of researching this product that uh, oftentimes department heads will, you know, put content in there in different fonts and different colors. And it, it's really tough to kind of keep everything uh, kind of in, in one look and feel. And you can, you know, it's one of those things you don't think about spending a lot of time trying to uh, kind of make everything look similar and, and, and professional. 
uh, that that's just not necessary. So oh, I appreciate that. Um, what about you, Amy? What are what are some of the kind of challenges that you were facing before ClearGov, and, and, and what made you consider the platform? Um, good afternoon. Uh, we were already using the transparency portal, and I had heard that the budget cycle was coming online soon. And as I began the budget process, I was preparing 72 different spreadsheets with multiple years of data, trying to make sure everything was aligned. And I realized we are the second fastest growing county in this state. There has got to be a more efficient, consistent way to do this. And so I reached out to ClearGov and have been overjoyed ever since. That's awesome. Love to hear it. I mean, being the second fastest growing county in the state, I mean, I would imagine there's a lot of capital requests and capital projects coming through the system. That, that's tough to kind of keep everything straight. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. Appreciate you sharing that. What I'm, I'm curious, uh, Amy, from, from your perspective, what do you think sets ClearGov apart in, in your mind? You know, as you looked at different solutions, what, what really kind of caught your eye and you know, how would you characterize our, our platform? Uh, the, word, the first words that come to mind are user-friendly. It is absolutely simple for any layman off the street to open up a web page and see what's very happening. Clear to use? Yes, it's very clear. <laughs> and the, then once the relationship is built, customer service is just off the charts. It's, the responses are amazing. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome here. I know our client success team will be really happy to hear that. And look, we, we, we really, really do try to, you know, form a relationship with the customers and, and, and be very responsive to their needs. And, and we know that you know, our clients have, you know, uh, very hard and fast timelines that uh, are, are unique to this market. And, um, you know, we also, I, I like to say, we, we really, really, I think, pride ourselves on trying to uh, listen to our clients and, and have them really help drive the, the product itself uh, and incorporate their feedback. That's, that's often where we get our best ideas and really kind of follow your lead. What about you, Lucia? What, uh, what, what did you feel set clear of apart and you know, maybe what words would you use to describe the solution? Same as Amy, easy to navigate uh, both on the end user and ourselves and in, in putting the, like the digital budget book together, easy to navigate. Um, and again, yeah, the responsiveness from CareGov, the communication that you guys provide, uh, customer service is, is been great for us. Uh, um, you guys do listen, <laughs> you know, even, even sometimes you're in, uh, we have a lot of ideas that, and you guys are very open to feedback and, and we appreciate that. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. you guys have provided some, some great feedback and I know there's, there's a number of features in there specifically because of the uh, Yuma's request. And um, I appreciate the, the the insight on you know it sounds like the ease of use and, and clarity for users is is really important and you know I, I think one of the things that I found over the years is you know we started as a transparency platform with this public facing transparency portals and again the 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 idea was to to make a platform that you know residents could clearly see where their money was coming from and going to. But what we found over the years is that internal communications is, is almost just as, if not more important, and providing solutions that are clear and easy to use to the internal users is actually critically important to a budget cycle management platform to make sure that you know, the department heads, they're not, they can go in there very quickly and easily and, and submit requests and, and changes to the budget. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be, you're going to have a whole other challenge on your hand. So I, I think that's, that's important. Um, the other question I wanted to ask, and I'm sure a lot of people are thinking about this, is, is onboarding. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of platforms out there that you know take three, six, even twelve months to implement. And uh, you know, what what were your what was your onboarding process like, Lucia? Um, you know, you know how, how uh, can you maybe describe that process to us and 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 how easy or difficult it was? Yes, um, it was very seamless. Um, communication with ClearGov, it was continued communication, um, and it was just seamless. It, we, our transition was very easy. Um, we had no challenges. Uh, it was fast, uh, and, and it was just very, very easy. 
<laughs> That's all I can say. I, I've been part of implementation uh, for our budget software. And I mean, kind of like you said, Chris, three, four, five months before we can implement. Clearbell, I want to say maybe we provided the data in July and we were up and running by um, September, if anything. And just yeah. as, as we were working out any uh, changes to our charter accounts and stuff like that, not but the data was up there fast and, and quick. Yeah, no, I think that's one, one point you mentioned real quick. I think it's worth mentioning is we often get data uh, from antiquated systems that are quite messy. And, and, and sometimes the, the account structure is not really how you want to present the data. So we work with a lot of our clients to you know sometimes even present their data in a different and improved way than they may have in their accounting system because we've got this this platform that can kind of group things the way the way they need. So, um, and, I, and I believe you said you were using uh, Oracle Cloud e ERP, right? Yeah. Correct. Yes, yeah. so we were using Oracle Cloud. So it's an easy download from Oracle Cloud, easy upload in, uh, to to Cloud that we send off to you guys. Great. And I believe Amy, you said you were using Tyler Encode Ten. And so what, what was your experience you know, working with the, the Tyler platform and transitioning into the data into ClearGo? It was super simple. I downloaded a few reports into Excel. I sent an email and within a few weeks, we were up and running and ready to send out requests to department head. Very cool, very cool. And I know, um, I don't think it's out just yet, but I know they're working on it um, is a is export feature to, to ENCODE 10. Um, so we, in our budgeting platform, I think it's worth mentioning, it's kind of a two-way integration, right? You, you want to get the data out of your accounting system uh, so you can, you know, have that foundation to build the budget on. But then there's also this export feature that, that we've done. Uh, we, we've looked at, you know, the, the import features for the different, the different accounting system so that you can export from ClearGov into that, that format and make it really easy to import that budget back into those systems. So I think that's worth mentioning. Um, yeah, and Chris, that's right along the uh, right along the lines. We have uh, several questions in the uh, chat here, and, and I think you were just addressing that same question, right? Uh, the, the question is, are you able to build accounting structures in the system, fund, sub-fund, department costing center, uh, grant ledger category, et cetera? And then also, can you drill down on the published uh, website um, for the public to drill through those various levels of accounting structure? Yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Um, we've got a, a really flexible system. Uh, and uh, even, you know, our data onboarding team, uh, virtually all have a, a, a public accounting background. And so you work directly with them to uh, kind of build the, the different structure that you how you want to present it. And, you know, oftentimes, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, kind of play with how to best set it up and how to present it uh, on the public side of things. Um, you know, on our platform from the digital budget book side, you can create um, all the different charts from all the different angles that you want, or you could just create a page around a particular, you know, cost center or department or division. And um, really on the transparency center, we, we purposely made it not have a bunch of kind of uh, bells and whistles that would be confusing to the average resident. We wanted it to be kind of a, a simple tree structure, which you just drill down and drill down and drill down deeper until you get to the, that checkbook level detail, right? That foundational detail. So um, it is very, very flexible as, as, as far as how you're gonna present that data. Um, someone actually, I see another question here. How do you submit a digital budget book for the, the GFOA Distinguished Budget Award uh, program? So, um, uh, I'll say we're, we're about to put a blog post out on this, but um, uh, to summarize it, it it's really that, not that much different, right? Uh, in the application form, um, they actually just updated the, the application online to, to um, you know, note that you can add a URL, uh, so you can submit a URL to the budget book homepage. Uh, they also prefer that you upload a PDF at the same time. Uh, and then within the, um, within the award criteria application itself, the criteria location guide. Um, right now it asks you for the page number, um, but I can confirm that you can actually just put in a URL. So if you wanna just cut and paste a URL to where each criteria is met, you can do that. And frankly, that's gonna, that would save a lot of the uh, time for the reviewers. And we have gotten some feedback from GFOA that uh, if you are gonna submit a, a digital budget book, the URL 
A, submit the, the PDF along with it, and B, put in the direct links uh, to where you meet those criteria so they don't have to go fishing around the budget book for you, okay? Um, cool, so I think uh, we talked about um, importing and, and working with the, the data. Amy, I, I, I'm curious, what, what, um, you know, what results have you seen with this, this platform and, and maybe what, what kind of unexpected results, if any? Um, I think what was most surprising was the buy-in that I received from the department heads and elected officials once they received their request forms. Everyone was completely on board. I had zero resistance. And basically, I got three months of my life back not having to fight with spreadsheets <laughs> and trying to get everybody to do the, the same thing the same way. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I know that's a, often a concern. Um, you know, are the department heads going to use this? Are they going to like it? But yeah, we're, we're finding that you know, once they get in there and see how it's used, they, they prefer it over spreadsheets. They don't need to kind of keep track of this stuff and send it back. They just got this one central repository to do that. Uh, it's great. Uh, what about you, Lucia? What are, what are some of the results that you've seen and maybe unexpected results? I think for us, the integration between our two different modules that we have, that saved a lot of time um, in putting um, our budget book together and our capital improvement plan together. Um, again, the transparency that we're providing the community is a, a easier, uh, more visual uh, presentation for them. Um, so uh, I think that's that's one of our main areas where we what we present to our board of supervisors is is easier for them to to visualize. Yeah, no, that's that's neat. We know, I, I have heard that the 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 boards, the councils, and committees really like this kind of new way of of being able to peruse the budget, not having to find where something is in a six hundred page document. They can just kind of click around to what they want to see and even customize the. The view that they want to see, so that that's that's neat to hear you say that. What um what would be kind of the some of the success metrics that that you measure uh, this program by, or or any successes that you you'd want to highlight, Lucia? For us, say one of our our uh, items has been that we are we are able to meet all the GFA criteria um, and even improve upon some of our our, our ratings from proficient to outstanding. Awesome. Yeah, I know you were uh, one of the, the first counties in the country to, to, to win the Distinguished Budget Award program with uh, the Digital Budget Book platform. So uh, we're, really, we're really proud of that internally and, and, and uh, you know, so happy to hear that. Um, now, what, what about you, Amy? I mean, are there any success metrics? I, I, I know you mentioned uh, you got three months back of your life. That's, that's a pretty big success metric. It is, since I am the sole person responsible for assembling the budget book and disseminating the information. Right. You know, it's taken a lot of the weight off my shoulders. I, I work 10 hours a day instead of 12 to 14 now during <laughs> budget cycle time. So. Really, I'm just gonna stop this webinar here right now and, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> that's, that's a really good, really great quote. I mean, I, I've had another uh, finance director tell me that uh, they, he signed up for for ClearGov to, to spend more time with his family and, and, and has found that. And you know that, that that's really awesome, awesome, awesome to hear. So um, appreciate that. I guess uh, maybe the, the, the last question I have is, um, what, are, what are some of your thoughts on next steps? You know, ways that you want to continue to improve your budget cycle platform or your budget cycle. You know, at ClearGov, one of our values is be better and, you know, to us, it just means that you don't have to be you know, perfect. You don't have to implement everything all at once, but, you know, just constantly be better. Um, so, Lucia, I mean, what are your thoughts on kind of where you're looking to, to take ClearGo next? I know we're looking at our two uh, current solutions that we have. I, uh, we've used our digital budget book actually to create our budget in brief already, and we have that outside. Um, so we're looking at other opportunities that we can find for to be able to use that module. Um, we're also using our capital projects, uh, capital budgeting module to start displaying projects and uh, provide quarterly re, uh, updates to the public so that it's uh, available for, for them to view on online. Great. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a really timely 
uh, really timely conversation with all the federal funding coming through and and, and cap money for capital improvement that uh, the capital budgeting platform is out there. We, we've seen a number of uh, counties start to use the platform uh, for, for CIP books uh, as well. Um, and certainly project communications, you know, people wanna know where, where is this you know, additional funding going? And I think, you know, in a, in a modern world, having a, a map that you can show, hey, here's all the projects and you can see them all going on and you can follow them and ask questions. Uh, I think that's really important. And I think, you know, frankly, citizens are, are coming to expect that type of thing. Um, what about you, Amy? Any, any thoughts on, on next steps? I know, Amy, uh, you know, you, you guys have every single one of our, our, our products, and, uh, but I know sometimes it's hard to, to implement every single one at, at once, but um, what are your thoughts that go next? We are, our next step is to work with the capital budgeting and get the project pages set up to, because we do have three or four rather large projects coming with some of the additional federal funds that have been received. And so we're gonna use that to communicate with our citizens where that money is going and how we're going to use it to benefit them. Awesome, awesome. Well, that, uh, that's great to hear. Let me, um, we got just a couple minutes left. Um, so let me ask some questions here. I know Amy, you, you had mentioned that you, you had already used our personnel budgeting platform too to, to, to build your personnel budget. That, I, I should mention to the, the audience, that product just came out in October and, and, and Amy was a, one of the first people to, to jump all over that. And um, uh, I was talking about, about it earlier. Be, be interested to hear your feedback on the personnel piece. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, like you said, we received it in October and our budget deadline was November 15th. And I was able to even beat that by a week. Nice. Yeah, and it looked like, Chris, we have a, a, to dive a little bit deeper into that, um, we had a question that came in on the personnel piece. Um, is it able to handle the cost of living increases and also um, implement the step increases that are individual for each yep. uh, employee and based on their higher date? Yeah, is I see it going Deborah. to that level of detail? Yeah, so Deborah asked that. Um, so the answer is yes. Uh, when we were really scoping out this product, uh, it was amazing to me how, you know, how big some of these spreadsheets were and how uh, detailed and intricate and interconnected they were. And, and we realized that, you know, we really had to recreate all this functionality to, to have a, uh, a fully functioning platform. And it's, it's not something where you can just do a little bit of it. Um, it's kind of all or nothing. And so there was really a high bar that we set for ourselves in building this product. And, and so when we looked at the ability to, to set cost of living increases um, based upon collective bargaining units, that's absolutely there. Uh, when we were in the demo and I was showing you kind of uh, when you're when you're looking at the five year graph, you can go to that table beneath and uh, set uh, collective bargaining um, cost of living increases on, a, on a, there was a permanent adjustment column. So you can you can set that year by year and you can play with the numbers. You can, you know, build one plan. What if we did a two and a half percent and then clone that person that clone that scenario and, you know, change it to three or three and a half percent. And so you can do a lot of different things with that. And then um, they're also asking about step increases based upon the individual's hire date. So absolutely. Um, one of the things when you import the, uh, the, the, the personnel into the platform, you're going to want to do that every year, just the most recent kind of snapshot of your, your personnel. Um, it asks what their hire date is, and um, it actually asks what what their current step is. Um, and the reason why we ask what their current step is and when they went to that step is because you could have had someone hired 20 years ago and they were on a different plan than you have now. Um, so it asks what their their current step is uh, and when they went to that step, so that the system can calculate. Uh, when they need to go to the next step and, and prorate that for the year. So it'll automatically do that out you know, as many years as you want. Um, we even have the capability to, to do multiple steps a year. And a good example of that is, uh, is if you have a probationary period. So you can set you know, step one for the first 90 days and step two is you, know, um, you, know, you, you hit that after 90 days and then you go step two after 365. So you can set those time periods and it will prorate that for you. I'm just looking through the list here to see if we have any other questions. Feel free to en uh, enter questions there. I think I've gotten to most of the questions here. Looks like it. That's good. We're, we're, we're at time. 
Um, just a couple minutes left here. So I think, uh, I think that's maybe a good, good time to wrap up. Um, so you know, I'll just say, um, you know, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Amy and Lucia. Uh, appreciate you joining us and appreciate your business and the, the kind words and, and feedback for ClearGov. I, I hope that uh, you know, a lot of listeners on the, the call here uh, found value in it. And uh, you know, hopefully one day we can also save three months of, of their lives. Uh, and uh, also thank you to, to Kyle and all of NACO for, for having us on today. We, we really appreciate the support and partnership. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Chris. And thank you to Amy and Lucia also for your time and a great presentation. Very helpful discussion, um, Chris. And we, and we really appreciate ClearGov's partnership, but we, we really appreciate um, your efforts to work with our members to power more effective, more efficient budgeting uh, processes, which of course in turn uh, you know, powers effective and efficient counties. So um, we really appreciate your commitment and mission to, um, to that goal. And um, and also, Amy and Lucia, we thank you for, you know, again, your pu great public service and just being available, right, to share your stories, share your insights um, in, in using ClearGov and how that's helped you with your uh, work and your business um, at the county. So thank you both um, very much. And uh, again, just want to thank everyone for tuning in uh, from across the country. And uh, as, as I had mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, um, this was being recorded, so we will have a copy of the webinar on the NACO website uh, that you can access at any time. Um, and then you'll also receive an email with uh, information on that. And if you have questions, uh, just I would encourage you to reach out to myself. Um, and I, is it safe to assume, Amy and Lucia, you, you may be available for uh, if, if anyone wants to reach out and just talk about your experiences with ClearGov? Is that, um, would, would you be willing to, to offer yourself for that? Absolutely. Yeah. I just want to mention, we have this uh, website up on the screen here that if anyone wants to get a, a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo for their county, um, go to this page and, and we can set you up. Thank you very much, Chris. I included my email. So if anyone would like to reach out, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll get the uh, information where it needs to go. But um, thank you all for your time and a great presentation. And I hope everyone stays safe out there today. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Take care.